Hello everyone, this is Sarah, and today's video I'm going to show you how to make this fun and festive and sparkly Christmas tree hat. It's so much fun to make and it's super fun to wear, little on the silly side. Now the pattern is made to fit about a 20 to 22 inch head. And keep in mind, the way we're going to be doing the band is it's going to be very stretchy. Now, if you would like to see the written pattern, you can find that blog link in the notes underneath this video. To make this Christmas tree hat, you're going to need either a chunky number five or two strands of worsted weight number four. I'm going to be using two strands, and you'll need to use two strands of the brown for the hat band. You'll need to use two strands of the green for the Christmas tree, and the star is also done in two strands. Now this is done in a yellow, and I'm going to use some of this leftover silver that I have for the one that we're going to use for our demonstration. Now, like I said, you can use a chunky number five or two strands of any worsted weight number four yarn. This green yarn is the I love this yarn in the metallic. The brown one is just your regular Red Heart Super Saver and the silver one is a, uh, called Party. I believe it's by Karen. Yes, Karen Simply Soft Party and has a little bit of a metallic thread running through it also. So you can see you can use any worsted weight number four yarn using two strands. You're also going to need some buttons and I use just circle buttons on this one that are all sparkly, but I've got an assortment here of some buttons. I'm going to use some mittens and just different shapes and some sparkle ones that I'm going to use. And then I also have this one that looks like a little package. And I added a little package on here so it looks like there's a little package under the tree. But you can do whatever you want. You can add ribbons, buttons, bows, appliques, whatever you want to dress up your Christmas tree hat. Now we're also going to be stitching with a K hook today. And the K hook is called a K ten and a half which is a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. And you need that big hook because we're stitching with chunky or two strands of worsted weight. Now you'll notice I have two needles here. I've got a thick needle with a nice big eye to weave in the end since we're using thick yarn. And then I have a smaller needle that I'll use with just one strand of yarn to sew on all my buttons. So you'll need two. And the reason you need two is this big one you're not going to be able to get through the holes of those buttons, so you'll need a smaller one so you can get it through those holes. The last thing you'll need, of course, is your scissors. Go gather up your festive yarn and your fun buttons and we'll get started. We're going to begin first by making the hat band and then we'll work our way up to the top of the Christmas tree hat. So you're going to start with our brown yarn and like I said you can either use a chunky number five or two strands of worsted weight number four yarn. We'll begin with our slip knot. Put our hook in and chain five. We're going to begin stitching single crochets in the second chain from the hook. There's your first chain, here's your second. Put your hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both of those loops. And we'll do this in the next three. So we'll have a total of four single crochets. We're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. Alrighty. Now, <clears throat> the chain one does not count as a stitch, so we're going to go right in this first single crochet, but we're going to be working in the back loops of our stitches. 
So if you look at the top, you can see that it looks like there's a braid going across. The loop up here that's closest to you is the front loop. The loop back here on these stitches that is away from you is the back loop. And we're only going to be stitching in the back loops, and that's going to give us a nice stretchy headband. So we'll put our hook through just going in the back loop and stitch a single crochet. We'll do this all the way across in those four single crochet stitches. We'll chain one and turn. Now you'll see on the back side you won't see anything right there. It'll be just like an indention. But on the front side you'll see that it has a ridge. And this is the way we're going to stitch the entire band. We'll go in those back loops of those single crochets of each row, stitching one single crochet in each of the four single crochets. There we go, and chain one. And now you can see there's a ridge on this side, and although there was a ridge down here, now there's an indention. Let me grab my Christmas tree hat so that you can get a good idea of what it should look like. There's indentions and ridges, and the front looks exactly the same as the back. So we'll continue on stitching this way, one single crochet in the four single crochets, chain one, and turn and remember, we're working in the back loops only. Chain one, turn. One single, oops, and make sure I get both of those pieces of yarn. Working in the back loops only. See how that looks? The same on both sides. Chain one and turn. And we're going to continue to stitch these four single crochets working in the back loops only for 52 rows, a total of 52 rows. So make sure you count those first ones. And you can see, I wanted to help you in this area because sometimes this can be a little confusing. This is a row and this is a row. This is a row and this is a row. And the way I count mine is when I look at it like this, here's my first row, I count in the ridges and I go two, four, six. Because it's confusing the way that it looks because you're stitching on in those back loops only, it looks different than regular counting of rows of single crochets. So if you remember to count by twos, two, four, six, it will help you keep in line and remember how many rows that you've done. So like I said, we're going to continue stitching one single crochet in each of the four single crochets, working in the back loops only of each row, chain one and turn for a total of 52 rows. I have single crocheted my rows working in the back loops only for 52 rows. We're going to put the two ends together and make sure it's not twisted or your hat won't work right. There we go. Just like this. Here's the end. Make sure I put that chain one in there at the end of that row. Snug that down. And we're just going to place one single crochet in each of the single crochets across, joining the two sides together. So I'm going to go in this first single crochet here and the first one there, through and single crochet. Going through both thicknesses. And here's the last one. There we go. 
I'm going to snug that down. I'm just going to put a chain one in there to hold that so we can open that up and you can see it blends in nicely with the ridges of the band. We're going to change color so I'm going to go ahead and cut the brown yarn off. We're all done with the brown and we're going to start using the green. Now this one here on the bottom we'll weave that in later. We're going to put our hook through the brown Put the green yarn on our hook and pull it through that loop. Snug that down. Pull all those strings to the back and hold it, just hold it with my finger and chain three. And this chain three counts as a double crochet right there. Now, the way we're going to stitch this next row, we're going to place one double crochet in the end of each rose. Now don't let this throw you off because remember everywhere there's a ridge there's also an indention that's going to need a stitch. So let's go in this first indention and stitch a double crochet and now we're going to go in the ridge and just in case you don't remember how to stitch a double crochet yarn over we're going to go in that end pull up a loop You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two. Now I'm going to go in the space between those ridges. Some more yarn out here. And I'm going to work around the hat band or headband of the hat, stitching 52 double crochets. We want the same amount of double crochets as we have rows on the hat band. So I'm going in the top of the ridge and then I'm stitching in the indention in between. Just to help you understand a little better where to put your stitches, remember that the front side looks exactly the same as the back side. So when you're stitching in a ridge on this side, it's an indention in the back. And when you're stitching in the indention on the front, it's a ridge on the back. And we want to make sure we get all 52 double crochets, one in the end of each row. This sets up the entire hat for all the stitches that we'll need to make. Alright, let me get some more yarn out here. Alright, so I'm just working around the hat band, stitching one double crochet in the end of each row for a total of 52 double crochets. There we go. When we get back around, we'll join to the top of this chain three. So I'm just going to finish this row, stitching one double crochet in the end of each of the rows of the hat band. I stitched all the way around my hat band, I stitched my last double crochet, and now I'm going to join to the top of this chain three with a slip stitch. So I'm going to go in the top of that chain three, pull up a loop, and pull that loop through the loop that's on my hook, and then I'm going to chain three. Now that we've joined and we've chained three, we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets around. Now our chain three counted as this first double crochet, so we'll go right in the next double crochet. And we'll stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets around.
So I'm going to continue working around, stitching one double crochet and each double crochet around. And when I get back around here, I'll join to the top of my chain three, like we already did on our last row. I finished another row of the double crochet all the way around, stitching one double crochet in each stitch around. Get my last double crochet in. I'm going to join to the top of our chain three like we did before with a slip stitch and chain three. Now for the next three rows we're going to be doing it exactly the same. One double crochet and each double crochet around for three more rows. We'll do them exactly the same as we did this row, stitching one double crochet and each double crochet around, join to the top of the chain three and chain three. And this will give us a total of five one double crochet in each double crochet around rows. So we have the beginning row and then four more rows for a total of five rows of one double crochet in each stitch. This hat is super fast to stitch up and of course super fun to wear. So I'm going to go ahead, this might be a good place for you to pause your video, do your three more rows of one double crochet in each double crochet and then catch back up with us again. So you can see that I have finished my five rows of double crochet. Now we're going to begin our decrease rows. I've joined to the top of my chain three and I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to stitch in the next three double crochets because my chain three here counts as one double crochet. So I'm going to stitch three more double crochets. And now I'm going to stitch what's called stitching two double crochets together or a double crochet decrease. They're called uh, two different things, but they actually mean the same thing. So we're going to yarn over. We're going to go in our next double crochet and pull up a loop. Then we'll go to the next double crochet and pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through the first three. Yarn over and go through those last two. And what we've done is we've turned two double crochets into one, or we've decreased by one. And the way this row will work is we'll stitch four double crochets, one in each of the next four double crochets. And then we'll stitch a double crochet decrease in the next two stitches. Now we'll stitch four double crochets again. One, two, three, and four and then we'll stitch another double crochet decrease. And we'll repeat this all the way around this row. There we go. One, two, three, one more. And then again, a double crochet decrease or stitching two double crochets together. And we'll continue repeating this all the way around this row and then we'll join to the top 
of the chain three like we've done previously. And you'll notice that your hat will start to lean in a little bit because we want to get our hat up to a point like a Christmas tree. So I completed this row doing four double crochets and then a double crochet decrease repeating it all around. I'm going to join to the top of my chain three, chain three, and then on this next row we're just going to stitch one double crochet and each double crochet around. Now it can be a little confusing when you have those decrease stitches in there knowing where to put your stitch. So if you just look at the tops of your stitches, you'll see it looks like a braid. Make sure you put one double crochet through each of those. Because when you decrease, like I said, it can be just a little confusing if you're not used to doing it. So we're just going to place one double crochet in each double crochet around and then join to the top of our chain three and then we're going to do another decrease row. I stitched this next row of one double crochet in each double crochet. And so this next row, we're going to stitch it similar to row 58, where we did our first decrease stitches. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet, and then we're going to double crochet in the next three stitches. Then we're going to stitch two double crochets together or a decrease stitch. Like I said previously, sometimes they're called one and sometimes the other. Both of them are correct and work just fine because they're the same thing. So now we're going to stitch four double crochets, one in each of the next four. And now we're going to stitch a double crochet decrease. And that's how this row will work. Four double crochets, one in each of the next four, and then a double crochet decrease. And we'll repeat this around. There's the four. Now I'm going to stitch the decrease. And I'll continue stitching this around four double crochets, one in each of the next four, and then a double crochet decrease, working all the way around this row. And then again, we'll join to the top of our chain three. So I finished this row. I'm going to join to the top of my chain three. And we're going to chain three. Now this row is a decrease row as well and it is similar, but not exactly the same, of course. So instead of stitching two double or three double crochets here, we're only stitching two. Our chain three counts as one and then we're going to stitch two more double crochets, one in each of the next two stitches. 
Then we're going to stitch our double crochet decrease. And then we're going to stitch only three double crochets, not four, like we did on the other two rows. So we're stitching three double crochets, and then we stitch our double crochet decrease. One, two, three, and then our double crochet decrease. All right, so one double crochet and the next three double crochets and then double crochet decrease. And that's the way this row or round will work. One, two, three, there we go, and then a double crochet decrease. And we'll repeat this all the way around this row. So now we're back to our chain three. We're going to join to the top of our chain three and chain three. And if you look at your hat, you can see that it's starting to move in towards that point. We join to the top of our chain three and chain three. And this next row is done similar to the previous row. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet. So now we're going to double crochet in the next two double crochets. Then we'll stitch a double crochet decrease with the next two stitches. And then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. Then we'll stitch a double crochet decrease with the next two double crochets and one double crochet in the next three. One, two, three. And the top of our hat is getting smaller and smaller. All right, so there's my three stitches, so now I need to do a double crochet decrease and then one double crochet in the next three stitches. And a double crochet decrease. Definitely getting smaller and smaller, isn't it? There we go. We're back to our chain three. We'll join to the top of our chain three. Oops, get in there. There we go. With the slip stitch and chain three. For our next row, we're going to just place one double crochet in each double crochet around. And this is to give us just a little bit of length between these next few rows. So I'm just stitching one double crochet in each double crochet around. And as always, we'll join to the top of our chain three and chain three. And 
As our hat gets smaller and smaller at the top, the rows get quicker and quicker. Although this hat with this, although this hat whips up really quickly. All right, you're almost around. A few more stitches. Okay. Now we're going to join to the top of that chain three again. And chain three. All right, we need to get this hat to a point. So we're going to do some more decrease rows. So in this row, we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next double crochet. And then we're going to do a decrease stitch with these next two double crochets. And the way this row is going to work is there'll be two double crochets, one and two, and then two double crochets together. One double crochet in the next two. And then two double crochets together. There we go. <laughs> the opening's getting smaller and smaller. There we go. We finished this decreased row. We joined to the top of our chain three and chained three. And the way this last row is going to work is we're going to be stitching all decrease stitches. Yarn over, go in the first stitch, pull up that loop, and go in the next stitch and pull up the loop. Yarn over, go through the first three, and yarn over, and go through those last two. And we'll do this all the way around. And this is going to make our hat have its pointed top. We'll do this all the way around, and then I'll show you how to close the hole at the top. So I did those seven double crochet decreases, and then we also have this chain three here. Don't worry about that. Just go ahead and join to the top of that chain three with your slip stitch and you are going to have a little bit of a hole, don't worry. We're going to cut our yarn, but we're going to leave ourselves, you know, about 12, maybe 14 inches because we're going to need that to close that hole up. So we're going to go ahead and tie that off and then we're going to turn our hat wrong side out. And we're going to use our great big needle and thread those yarn pieces through our needle. And if you look at the top there, you can see those stitches. And what we're going to do is we're just going to weave in and out those stitches. gently pulling those in and I, what I do is I pull it in tight and then I go back the other way. Make a stitch 
and then just go back the other way. I want to make sure the top of my hat is not going to come undone. And then I make a few more stitches. Make sure that's weaved in snugly. And I will make a knot. I know we always say in crochet you should not knot, but I do. When I'm closing a hole like this, I'll put a couple of those knots in there because I don't want the top of my hat to come open. And we'll go ahead and give that a snip and we'll turn our hat back over. This is the back. This is the front. You can decide where you want the front and back to be. Pull that out a little bit so it's a little bit more of a point. We pulled that out a little bit so it's a little bit more of a point. So the next thing we need to make for our hat is the star. I wanted the star to be just a little bit silly so we're making it a big chunky star. We're going to begin with our slip knot, and again I'm using two strands of yarn and I've chosen to use this silver instead of the yellow just for fun. We're going to chain three and then we're going to stitch five single crochets in the second chain from the hook. Here's your first one, here's your second one. one two, three, four, that tail out of the way, and five. So there's our five single crochets. We're going to join to the top of that first single crochet with a slip stitch and just chain one. Snug that down and that's how it should begin for the star. So now we need to make the points of our star. So we chained one, we're going to need to chain three more so that we have four chains. We're going to turn and place a slip stitch in that second chain from the hook. Then we're going to stitch a single crochet in the next chain. And then we'll place a half double crochet in the next chain. And a half double crochet, you yarn over, go in the chain or stitch, pull up a loop. You'll have those three loops. You'll yarn over and go through all three of those loops. Then we will slip stitch in the next single crochet and again chain four. And we're going to repeat this four more times so that we have five points on our star. So we chained four, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook, then we'll single crochet in the next chain, and half double crochet in the next. Then we'll slip stitch in the next single crochet. Now we have two points. There we go. Slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet. All right, one more star point. Chain four. Oh no, hope I'm not getting a knot in my yarn. <laughs> Slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. 
single crochet and half double crochet. Then we'll slip stitch in that next single crochet and we'll tie off. And that's our star. Now we're going to leave ourselves a little bit of yarn because we're going to use that to attach it to our Christmas tree. Alrighty. So we'll tie that off. And what I would like to do next is to go ahead and close up this hole in the center. So I'm going to turn that over and grab my needle here. and just go around those stitches on that first row. There we go. And just go right around there and just gently close that up so I don't have a hole in my star. All right, then I'll just weave back the other way. All right, cut that off. And here's my star. Isn't that cute? Nice and chunky. <laughs> All right, let's grab our hat and we'll go ahead and stitch on our star. So we'll grab that needle again. And it's kind of up to you how high you want your star. I like it kind of sticking off a little. <clears throat> Let me turn my hat sideways so I can stitch it on and what I do is I just go there we go down in the hat and just make stitches going around the center circle that way the edges of my star are kind of sticking out if you don't want your star to stick out you can tack those corners down the ends of the points of the star There we go. Looks like I need to rethread that. There we go. And we'll just go right down in there. And I just go behind the star and I do a couple of stitches just to make sure that that star is going to stay put. There we go. And then I just clip it off. So there's my hat, there's my pretty sparkly star, and the next thing we need to do is to add our fun buttons. So what I do is I sort of randomly set my buttons on where I would like them to be. And I want to make sure I get lots of color and maybe try to arrange it so they don't have all the same colors next to each other. And just randomly put them on wherever. Here's a candy cane. Here's another mitten. <clears throat> and I've got some red thread here so I can sew on the red ones. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take these off so I've got an idea of what I'm looking for. And I'll just start with this one. And the way I do it, as I go right on top, and I sew a little loop like this, leaving a tail. And then I put the button on. There we go. And then I do another no-no and just tie a knot behind. And put the button on just like that now I try to match the yarn as best I can but you know you can't always get it perfect let's go ahead since I've got red on here and attach this little candy cane and I'll do it the same way I go through some of the fibers of the yarn I leave a little tail and make a loop I put it through and if you feel like it's not going to hold just going through one time, you can do as many as you would like. Or you can go ahead and just take it to the back. It's up to you how you want to do your buttons. One thing, um, 
when I make a hat like this, it's probably not going to go through the laundry that often, but I want to make sure that um, they're going to stay put. You know, you don't want to get it out of the laundry and have the hat fall apart. So I sort of, when things get dirty or I get a little bit of um, dirt on it, I just try to spot clean it and then I'll put it maybe through a gentle wash, but I don't put it in the dryer. And I know a lot of these yarns are fine for that. But my theory is, and I've said this many times, that if I'm going to go, oops, <laughs> forgot to go back through the hole. If I'm going to go to all the trouble to make a fun Christmas hat, I want it to last, you know? And so I'll try to spot wash it if I can, rather than just tossing it in the laundry. These yarns can all be washed, these buttons can all be washed, and I don't think there's anything on this hat that can't go through the laundry. But I just want it to last as long as possible. And that's how I sew on all the buttons. So here's the finished Christmas tree hat with some of the buttons sewn on. And of course this one just has the sparkle buttons all over it. You can choose any buttons that you like and of course any colors. You can do a bright green, any color you want to. Yellow star, silver star, doesn't matter. Use your creative juices and make you a fun Christmas tree hat. Talk about the perfect accessory for a Christmas card. Thank you.